If you really want to win the Kentucky Derby, why don't you breed wings on your horse and fly around the track in 12 seconds? <laughs> the whole point is, sure you get varieties, but they're limited. There's a bunch of different kinds of cows in the world and they might have had a common ancestor. A cow. This magazine's where you order chickens. All right, boys and girls, should we order, you know, cinnamon queens, red rocks, white rocks, cherry eggers, or brown leghorns? But look what the magazine says. Jungle fowl are the original bird from which all varieties and strains of domesticated chickens are derived. Did you know all the chickens had a common ancestor? Anybody want to guess what it was? Chicken. You got it. There are eight kinds of bears in the world, and they might have had a common ancestor. A bear. Mm -hmm. You know, broccoli, ca cabbage, cauliflower, and Brussels sprouts all have a common ancestor called a plant. Mm -hmm. In California, they've got huge fields where they graft English walnut trees onto black walnut stumps. They do it because the black walnut stump, the root system is tough and can handle the weather over there, but the black walnut doesn't taste as good, it doesn't sell for as much money, and it's tougher to crack. English walnuts taste better, they sell for more money, and they're easier to crack, but the root system rots. So they cut them off and stick them together. They do it all over there. Well, they can do it because they're both a walnut. See, you could never graft an English walnut tree onto the back of a turtle. That won't work, see? The sugar beets were used for years. When sugar got expensive, they wanted to get sugar out of beets. So they tried to do selective breeding to increase the sugar content in sugar beets. They raised it from 6% to 17%, but could not. They, they ran into a brick wall. Hey, can't go past 17. And the further they got away from the normal wild sugar beet, the more problems they started having. Now you've got to babysit the field and spray pesticides and bugicides and everything else on it, okay? Because it's the disease resistance goes down. People say, don't bacteria become resistant to drugs? Well, that's because they lose information, not gain it. I'll show you. Dr. Spetner points out, this is based on a misunderstanding for the mutations that cause antibiotic resistance still involve information loss. For example, to destroy bacterium, the antibiotic streptomycin attaches to part of a bacterial cell called ribosomes. Mutations sometimes cause a structural deformity in ribosomes. Since the antibiotic cannot connect with the misshapen ribosome, the bacterium is resistant. Even though this turns out, mutation turns out to be beneficial for the moment, it still constitutes a loss of information, not a gain. No evolution has taken place. The bacteria are not stronger. In fact, under normal conditions with no antibiotic present, they are weaker than their non-mutated cousins. I'll give you an example. Suppose somebody's coming through town and they're handcuffing everybody, taking them off to jail, and then they're going to kill them. But you don't have any arms, so they can't handcuff you. Ah, ha, ha. Is that a beneficial mutation to not have arms? Well, yeah, for, a for the moment, okay. <laughs> but in, in long term, it's not beneficial, okay. And so the, all the examples they ever point to are bacteria becoming resistant to drugs. That's a loss of information, not a gain. The Bible is correct. They bring forth after their kind. James Hutton wrote a book in 1795, and people began to doubt the earth was 6,000 years old. Charlie, Darwin, or Charlie Lyle wrote a book in 1830, and people began to doubt the flood, and Charlie Darwin's book made people doubt the Creator. And by the mid-1800s, people were wondering, wow, if God didn't do it, how did we get here? Who's in charge of the world? That led directly to the rise of communism, Marxism, socialism, Nazism. We'll cover that on seminar part five. Politically incorrect, the dangers of this evolution theory. Now. Darwin didn't originate the evolution theory. It was around before him. He just simply made it popular, okay? But Timothy was warned by Paul here in 1 Timothy 6, you be careful about avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so-called. Evolution is not science. Evolution's a religion in every sense of the word. Hitler said, let me control the textbooks, I'll control the state. Professor Wilson at Harvard University said, as were many persons from Alabama, I was a born-again Christian. When I was 15, I entered the Southern Baptist Church with great fervor and interest in the fundamentalist religion. I left at 17 when I got to the University of Alabama and heard about evolution theory. He lost his faith, first year of college. That's what happened to Philip Wentworth. Studied for the ministry at Harvard, lost his faith, gave up on the ministry. That's what happened to Scott. He almost lost his faith until somebody showed him one of my videotapes. And he said, oh, man, you, you saved my faith, Brother Hoven. 
this, uh, Mary wrote me, or Marty wrote me and said, I want to let you know your ministry has been a blessing to me. I'm one of the high school students in the anthropology class that is a victim of the dangers of evolution teaching. I was very discouraged and questioned the existence of God. I listened to your seminars and that completely encouraged me and it was a blessing to me. Yay, rescued one. It's amazing how many thousands of people down through history have lost their faith because of this evolution teaching. Karl Marx studied, uh, said he wanted to serve God with his life. Went off to college, became an evolutionist. Comrade Stalin, there was a special this afternoon on TV. How many saw that about Comrade Stalin on the History Channel? He went to a Christian school, read Darwin's book, and became an atheist. Killed between 60 and 100 million of his own people. Andrew Carnegie became an evolutionist reading Darwin's book. He said it freed him from the shackles of religion. Light came in as a flood and all was clear. Not only had I got rid of theology and the supernatural, but I found the truth of evolution. Carnegie left behind millions of dollars to make sure evolution is taught in our schools instead of creation. He funded the National Center for Science Education. The list is really long. We'll have to quit now. But 75% of kids from Christian homes that go to public schools lose their faith after one year of college. What's in these textbooks anyway? What are they teaching our kids that's making them lose their faith? Well, we're going to cover some of the lies in the textbooks, some more lies in the textbooks in the next session after the break. Welcome back. This will be our second session of Lies in the Textbooks. Now again, I'm not against science. I'm not against schools. I'm not against teachers. I'm just against lies. Okay? There is no known evidence to support the evolution theory except things that have been proven wrong a long time ago. If real evidence exists for this evolution theory, I would like to see it. We've been offering a quarter of a million dollars for real scientific evidence for evolution. We've had that offer for over 10 years. There isn't any, okay? I'll give you an example. Suppose I had a theory that the moon is made of green cheese. Now that's a dumb theory, I know. But hey, it's okay to have a dumb theory. There are no laws against dumb theories. But then suppose I started teaching my students, hey kids, did you know NASA proved my theory in 1973 when they went there on a secret mission and drilled a hole and found the moon is made of green cheese? Oh no, hold on a minute. It's okay to have a dumb theory. It's not okay to lie about my evidence for my theory, okay? It is worse for me to get paid by tax dollars while I lie about my theory. So I don't mind if they want to have a theory that we came from a rock. That doesn't bother me. It does bother me that they want to lie to the students about their evidence, and it really bothers me that I have to pay their salary while they lie to support, spread their theory. So here's some of the evidence they use for evolution theory. They say, we have evidence from fossils. I say, guys, you've got to be kidding. No fossil counts as evidence for evolution. None. If you find bones in the dirt, all you know is it died. You don't know it had any kids. No fossil could count as evidence for evolution. None. They say, we have evidence from structure, from molecular biology, from development. Well, let's talk about a few of these. Evolution is dead. The theory is defunct. There is no evidence to support it. But some of the followers are pretty dedicated, and they're having a hard time letting it go. They'll even lie to you to make you ever think everything's fine. They say, wow, look at that evolution theory. It's perfectly fine. There's no challenge to evolution. Look, he never looked better. Pulse and heart rate look good. No, I'm sorry. He's a goner, okay? <laughs> Don't be the last one off the boat. It is sinking. Evolution is based on two faulty assumptions. Number one, they say mutations make something new. That's never been observed. Number two, natural selection makes it survive and take over the population. Evolution is actually a religion of death. In order for evolution to work, one animal evolves a little better than the rest. What must happen to the rest of them to make this thing work? They got to die. Or else the new improved gene is swamped back into the gene code. The question is so simple and profound. Did man bring death into the world like the Bible says? Or did death bring man into the world like evolution says? Somebody is wrong. Textbook says there are mutations. And they are the original source of variation in populations. I agree, mutations happen, no question. But mutations do not produce any evolution. Mutations scrambling up are scrambling up existing genetic code. They're not making anything new. Here's a five-legged bull. That's a mutant. There's no new information added. He already had the information on how to make a leg. It just made one in the wrong place, that's all. It's not new information. It is scrambled information. Here's a short-legged sheep. Again, no new information. And by the way, that's not beneficial. He's the first one the wolf is going to catch. 